Hello and welcome to Amsterdam to Kickstart 2025, where I'm now joined by Mark Gardner, Cloud and Service Provider Segment President for Schneider Electric. And Mark, pleasure speaking to you. You too. Uh, see you again. You are moving continents very soon, so I'm glad we grabbed you before you uh, cross the Atlantic. I am indeed, yes. It's, uh, I don't know if you can talk about that, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about your plans for the next 12 months. Yep. And you can tell us where you're going yeah. <laughs> and what you're going to be doing. So, um, a slight change in, uh, yeah. in my job. Uh, I've been here in Europe running the data center segment and our secure power division mm. for the last uh, two years. Um, I'm now moving over to the US to run the, the cloud and service pro provider mm. segment uh, globally, so uh, global president yeah. for CNSP segment. So you don't have enough work, you, you wanted a bit more. So Exactly yeah. that, yes. Exactly you're going to be that. in Boston, so beautiful it, city. It, it's moving <laughs> over to Boston, yes. Yeah. So uh, my, my family and, uh, yeah. and kids are excited about moving to the US. Yeah. Another another change. Very, very good seafood, so you, you, I'm sure you'll, you'll survive. Yeah, not uh, so keen on packing <laughs> up the boxes again, though. So, okay. uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, pain, pain of the game. Yes. <laughs> But look, we are just in February. It's literally 33, 34 days into the year, and it's been a heavy start of the year. I don't yeah. think there's ever, there's ever been a heavy start like this from $500 billion for Stargate uh, in the US announced by President Trump, then deep sick, yeah. then the whole world is upside down with tariffs and uh, uncertainty regulations, all sorts of things. I mean, if you look at the big picture, and now you're from a global hat as well, what's your take on everything that's going on? So, so look, the, the, the industry is, it's always been fast moving. Now we're into another level of, uh, of speed, speed, of agility, <laughs> and speed uh, of life. And <laughs> it's speed of light, exactly that. And um, <coughs> uh, it, it's this will happen. There's innovation that's going to happen all around the industry going mm. forward. Um, whether that is a new 500 billion going into the the industry and build out that's going to happen, or creation of uh, of new systems, new tools, and new AI, AI opportunity. Uh, and as a the world's most sustainable company, um, we, we celebrate innovation and that ability to drive a more sustainable world mm. going forward. Um, so it's great to see. Uh, I think, and, and hopefully we talk about this in, uh, in a few minutes, but I think when you look at uh, artificial intelligence and the role that's going to play in the future of, uh, of our world, it's going to be critical in terms of driving sustainability and driving change and change of behavior and people, automation of, uh, of systems. So. I fully embrace it, it's great to see. Um, it's great to see the focus this is getting, not just within our own industry, mm -hmm. but globally and uh, across uh, multiple in industries uh, and governments as well. Um, I think it's uh, much needed, because we need to open the doors as to what the data center industry mm -hmm. is and, and how we uh, impact everyday lives of uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the people. Mm -hmm. Which is a big PR part that we really need to get better at. Um, into the into the, the world outside of this, this doors, the, the world outside this conference. Absolutely. I guess one of the big pain points though, it is power, it is electricity. Yeah. Um, some people actually say that we are no longer a real estate business, we are now a power business. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one, do you agree with that? Two, how do you evaluate the power situation? And let, let's focus on Europe now, because we are a kickstart, so let, let's talk about Europe. How yeah. do you evaluate the current state of the electric electricity? So, um, into your point around are we a real estate industry yeah. or a uh, yeah. power industry, I think we're both. Mm. Um, you know, there's so much real estate that mm. uh, is in place at the moment and well, I think there's around about 8 gigawatts uh, mm. deployed data centre in, uh, in Europe at the moment. That is existing live real estate, very dependent on power but also dependent on areas like modernisation and upgrading of systems and infrastructure to be able to be more efficient in the power piece. Mm. So. That's why I say both. I think it's uh, you, you have to you have to couple them both together mm -hmm. almost to uh, to make this industry work. Um, for me, the the power crunch, the challenge that we have here in Europe at the moment, is an opportunity for innovation, an opportunity for growth. Um, we have to look at how we're working, um, not just how we're building data centres or mm -hmm. operating and man maintaining them. Um, that's one part of it. We must get more efficient in terms of the, the technology we put into it, driving uh, for more, better UPSs, for example, uh, highly efficient data, uh, UPSs, better cooling systems, uh, more circular uh, products that are uh, reused and mm. have longer life cycles. Um, that's one part of it. But innovation also in terms of how we work as an industry, um, with the public, with uh, the ecosystem around us, really critical. Um, and really innovation with how we work with the utilities companies. Um, 
we need to be far more transparent, more open, uh, explain what uh, we want to build and be fle more flexible with where we're going to build it. Yeah. Yeah. They need a seat at the table, Absolutely, which yeah. has been lacking. Yeah. And, and, and really, if you've got that, then you can start to plan. And I think mm. some of this st starts to feed into the modernization of our utility systems mm -hmm. as well, which as you bring in more re renewable yeah. sources, as you bring in more AI systems that are going to control those uh, renewable mm -hmm. energy sources and where we pull power from, mm -hmm. uh, we have to modernize our utility infrastructure to, mm -hmm. to meet the, the demands of mm -hmm. not just the data center industry, but um, community and, and growth yeah. across, uh, yeah. across yeah. Europe. Society. Society, like yeah. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> Literally everything. Yeah. Uh, but look, with hyperscale emissions set to kind of rise by about 50% in the next three years, what what needs to happen to make sure that they don't rise that 50 percent like we yeah. can curb we can still build these facilities we can grow the footprint you can grow the gigawatts not the megawatts the gigawatts but at the same time we make sure that we we save the planet we, we keep it clean yes um, and we don't actually increase by 50 percent emissions yeah so i think there's there's a couple of things uh, some of it's actually happening now mm. which is great to see mm. um i talked about uh, new technologies coming into the industry uh, so we have uh, SF63 switchgear now being deployed in, in data centers. We need to do more of that. SF6 is a hugely uh, pollut uh, polluting uh, uh, gas, so uh, we need to, uh, need to remove that from our, um, our deployments. I think one of the, I, I've been in the industry now for seven years, which feels amazing. It feels like a lifetime. Um, <laughs> but um, I remember when I came in in 2018, we were talking about liquid cooling and how that's going to transform. Now and it's becoming real. Yeah, now it's being deployed, and mm. this is great to see, because the efficiency gain that we get from liquid cooling, the upstream mm. gain in the uh, efficiency mm. in the switchgear, in the air cooling systems as well, um, really important. And this will drive down, uh, uh, drive sustainability into our data centers, mm -hmm. bring down PUE, and, and start to drive better performance. Mm. Yeah, because if you look at the, the GPUs, yeah. I mean, that's becoming very fast. It's consuming more energy. So there's only one way to do it, which has to be sustainability. Yeah. Um, I guess one big drive of sustainability has actually been regulation. What's your take on it? I mean, Europe is probably one of the heaviest <laughs> regulated continents yeah. on the planet. But do you see that as a good thing um, in the bigger scheme of things? For me, regulation is important. It's not mm. the, the be all and all of, mm. uh, of driving a, a sustainable agenda, mm. though. Mm. Um, you know, ultimately, it's there's lots of different factors that, that will drive sustainability in data centers. One of the main ones being is the, the cost to run a data center. It's getting more and more expensive to build, own, operate and manage a, a data center. So they're looking to try and drive um, efficiency in terms of how you operate, how you maintain it, mm. how you run that data center. That's, that's going to be as impactful as any regulation mm. that, uh, that, that comes into the market. Uh, so they're looking to, to those opportunities to, to, to make savings. Um, I think it's a part of it, not the uh, the critical part though, that's mm -hmm. going to drive change in our industry. Mm. And then I guess we are always talking about AI, but we never really talk about how AI is going to transform the data center itself, the actual building. Um, how do you think it's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen within that space? How is AI going to help data center become more green? Um, and what is Schneider working, looking at doing within that space? Like some stuff would still be in R&D. Yeah. But uh, w what can you tell us that you're working on, on in that front as well, to bring AI into the actual data center? So um, there's two, uh, yeah. a couple of things. Again, questions, from yeah. the infrastructure, I think you've got uh, AI is driving liquid cooling and everything yeah. else. Uh, it's the design philosophy around mm. data, data centers is being driven by AI. Yeah. But then there's the um, how you manage the data center and uh, mm. maintain it. Um, there's loads of data being generated. How do we automate those systems a little bit better and mm. uh, bring software stacks sitting above it that drives more automation into the data center? This is where AI is being deployed to drive efficiency and mm. improvements in terms of the, the operation. Mm. Extension of life of products. Uh, so we, uh, at Schneider Electric, uh, our eco-structure system really allows mm. us to drop a the data we get from our, uh, our equipment into a data lake mm -hmm. and understand when a UPS is operating out of the certain guardrails that we'd expect mm -hmm. it to mm -hmm. and be able to help the, uh, the operator then uh, say, well, what's the problem? How do we fix mm -hmm. it? How do we get it back into a more mm -hmm. efficient operation mm -hmm. and an extension of life ultimately? Mm -hmm. well, when you talk to the, to the guys here, so the, the collocator operators, the hyperscaler guys, what are the main key, the main pain points that they, they highlight to you? 
um, around sustainability and I guess maybe AI implementation into the data center? Yeah, I, look, I think a lot of it is around the connectivity piece. Mm. Um, there's still some restrictions mm. and challenges that we have to uh, have to manage around mm. um, the data flow within the, within the data center. Ultimately, especially Colo, if they're leasing out the, the, mm. the, their space, um, so we still have to manage manage some of our piece. Um, a big chunk of it, though, is really uh, how do we design for the future? Mm. Um, and how you're flexible as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. You know, it, we. We may have to design for 125 kilowatts per rack or 200 kilowatts mm. per rack. Um, mm. How do we design flexibility into the data, yeah. data center that allows them to train these large language models mm. uh, at one point, and then maybe a couple of years down the line they mm. won't want to move it to a far less dense mm. rack system and, and many more racks going into mm. the infrastructure. Mm. Um, so that flexibility to be able to meet uh, their customer needs, short term and long term, mm. is, is yeah. one of the main questions we have. It's has flexibility become a hard thing to manage? Because, I mean, things are actually changing every six months. The design, the design of a data center is almost changing. Um, how does that affect a company like Schneider? Because you're always putting things out, you're releasing new products, new solutions. How do you keep up with all this? Because if you have to change things every six months, there's a lot of things to change yeah. if it's every six months. So how do you keep up with being flexible? We have a fantastic CTO yeah. office uh, yeah. in okay. the business, which is which, Someone else which, does with that. which is great. <laughs> but they, we, we invest, uh, so um, uh, traditionally and uh, for a long time now, we've invested 5% mm. of our total turnover into R&D to make sure mm. we're at the forefront of technological advances. Mm. Um, mm. You'll have seen, uh, we're in the process of acquiring Motivair, mm -hmm. um, bringing new technology into the, into the business uh, allows us to really position ourselves mm. for our customers and for the future mm. of, um, uh, of the industry. Mm. Any more acquisitions in the pipeline? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, <laughs> well, you can say. <laughs> uh, but look, we were talking about, before we start recording, we were talking about something around bending the energy curve as well. Yes. Talk us through what that is, what, what does it mean, and how does it actually impact the data center? Yeah, so you mentioned um, the compute side of things mm. and, and what we're seeing from the server manufacturers. Um, if I uh, maybe start from the from the beginning, we in 2010 um, we were consuming somewhere around about two uh, zettabytes of, of data mm. as a as a global um, a community yeah. society. By 2020, that had gone up to just over 64 uh, zettabytes in terms of consumption. But over that decade, the energy consumption in data centers had actually stayed fa fairly flat. Um, mm. We hadn't we, we'd driven efficiency in uh, PUE, in mm. the operations, in how data centers are, are managed and run, the infrastructure that was going into data centers as well. Um, now, from 2020 mm. to 2024, that and uh, data curve has continued to go at the exponential rate and grow. Mm -hmm. the, the, the power curve has done exactly the same thing. So the consumption of power uh, from data centers mm -hmm. is starting to now mirror the, um, uh, the curve of, uh, of data, data demand. Um, the bending the curve piece is, mm -hmm. is critical for going forward. It's how do we bend the curve away from the data demand, which is always going to continue to grow. You know, societal need is based around data and data con consumption. Um, we need to bend away from that energy curve and uh, we see two opportunities to do that. One is really around the PUE uh, focus, so if we track where we, uh, we plan to be in 26 to 2030, uh, the expectation is PUE in, in our data centers will be somewhere around about 1.4. Mm -hmm. um, we think there's technology and opportunity in the market today that will allow us to get that down to 1.2. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. can do that, you start to bend the energy curve. The other aspect of it is the ICT compute, it's the, the servers. They're so much more efficient now going, uh, going forward in terms of the uh, amount of compute you can do uh, to the energy that you have to put in mm. to, to do that compute. Um, so bending the energy curve is a combination of both. It's adoption of the, uh, the new server technology mm. and uh, the GPUs that are hitting the market. It's mm. adoption of new technology to uh, drive down PUE. And based on our, our calculations, we believe by the end of this decade, we'll be able to bend the curve and uh, reduce energy consumption by around about 17% from what's forecasted today uh, through implementing these, uh, these, hmm. these, these, these two actions. And is that, so the 17%, will, will it be more Europe focused or are you talking about global terms? Globally, globally, oh, wow. yes. Yeah. It's, um, it's a significant change for the hmm. industry and um, and critical really to a, a sustainable data center mm. 
uh, deployment and, and growth. Um, if we continue at the same tra tra trajectory, it, uh, it becomes much more of a challenge. Yeah. I mean, actually, it makes me think, because we are in the lead up to, to COP30, which I think is in Brazil this year. Um, how do you expect the data center energy consumption, sustainability, digital infrastructure to be addressed at COP this year? Um, and picking up on everything we just talked about, like bending the energy curve, we talked about the, 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 the explosive January that we just had. Yeah. Um, how do you think this is going to be seen in, I think, I think it's in November or December, but towards the end of the year, how do you think it's going to be seen when those guys get together to talk about like the future of sustainability? Um, and data centers will have like center stage at some point. Just as we were talking about before, mm. so many eyes are on the data center industry now. Can't hide um, anymore. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's it, it's uh, everyone is, knows what the data center mm. industry is. Uh, they might not know how it works and uh, you know how how we operate, but everyone's heard of what the data center mm. industry is now. So um, it, it's it's far more mainstream. Uh, people mm. have opinions whether they uh, uh, they have the, the the full background around it. Uh, and it's in the mainstream media, so um, it will be a topic uh, topic of focus um, in all media going mm, forward. Absolutely. And then, Mark, when you come back next year to kickstart 2026, what's the one thing you want to have achieved? And uh, packing boxes to move to Boston is not <laughs> an achievement. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, for me, it's uh, it's very much around uh, this, uh, this this bend in the energy curve. Mm. How we increased adoption mm. of liquid cooling infrastructure, the, uh, the new technologies that we're bringing to market, um, and really help to start that momentum around bending the energy curve. Mm. Um, if we can sit here next year and have this conversation, we say, well, we've deployed so much of this and this is uh, really helping to yeah. start to move that needle. So building those That'll 70 percent. Yeah. yeah. We need momentum. Yeah. Which I think we're going to get. 2025 is all about building this momentum. Absolutely. Not just industry-wise, but global community wise, everyone from outside these walls yeah. as well. And then speaking of these walls, so when you come into these walls, when you come to Kickstart, why why is an event like this important for you, for Schneider? Uh, what does it deliver to you? So, it, I mean, uh, for one, it's very much around the networking. Uh, you know, this, this industry is all around uh, people and uh, uh, the contacts and who you know. Um, I love having these conversations mm. like we're having now, but with uh, with uh, our uh, with our, our customers and mm. uh, the ecosystem around this, you get to understand some of the challenges. Are we addressing those challenges as a supply, as a supplier into this industry, mm. and making sure that we're still meeting the, the customer needs mm. at the right pace and right speed to mm. uh, uh, to, to meet their uh, their output? Mm. Okay. Well, Mark Gardner, Cloud and Cloud and Service Provider Segment President of Schneider Electric. Thanks so much for talking to me. Thank you. Uh, as for your home, thank you for watching and do check our websites and social media for the latest digital infrastructure news from across the globe. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.